All right, good day everyone. Uh, so today we're uh, going to be having a bit of a discussion about creating worlds uh, in Realmworks, uh, what sort of detail you can get from creating a world, um, and you know how far down the rabbit hole you can go. Um, specifically, we're going to be starting with uh, the elemental planes that exist on the, the standard Toru sort of design world of D&D. Um, and going right down to the uh, the level of detail of who lives in what locations within the world, and really sort of showing you you know just how detailed it can get. So uh, let's jump over to Realmworks now. All right. So in front of me, you can see uh, anyone who's obviously familiar with my my videos will know that I, I've got my stories and my modules. Um, and, but down here, you'll see that I've started to change things a little bit, make things a bit uh, more clean. Um, what I've done is I've gone in my places and I've created the elemental planes. Now the elemental planes is just a, a top level placeholder for the elemental planes. Uh, for anyone who's got the uh, fifth edition dungeon man, um, dungeon guard, uh, you'll know that there's a section at the start that uh, covers this. Uh, it's got this lovely picture here um, that's used to basically, obviously, uh, give a high level overview of the various planes that exist. Um, you can see here that I've added pins, uh, so this is a smart image. I've added pins and I uh, click on the pins and from there I can see information about the plane that I want to go through, giving me a chance to have a bit of a read. Um, if I could find actual pictures of the planes with specific locations, I could probably even go a bit further here and have some more level of detail. Um, so we've got that, you've got the, the plane level, um, and then the planes, and then underneath that we're going to go further into detail. But first, let's just have a look at how these are made. So you've got the plus button here, and you've got the various different locations that you can create. Now you can see here, you can you can make planets, uh, star systems, galaxies, planes, alternate realities, um, and you've got mountain ranges, oceans, blah, blah, blah. Um, lots and lots of different various options. Um, and all I've really done is I, I've started out as far as I think I can go, and gone all the way through to the people that exist on the world. So, Elemental Planes, Plane, Realm Space. Uh, realm Space was something that's new to me, but uh, apparently uh, within the D&D &D world, the planets, or these planets in this system, all exist within what they call Realm Space, or the Sea of Night. Um, and then from there you've got the planets. So I got some basic information about the planets, and from here I could really sort of start detailing, you know, the climate of the planet, the terrain type, um, any notable NPCs that live, story points, whatever I like. Um, maybe I've got a mist that exists on this planet that, you know, when people go, it just eats their skin completely. You don't know. You can make whatever you want in here. Um, I've only really filled in one planet. Um, I've put a bit of basic information for them all, but overall, Toral is where I've spent the majority of my time. So you can see Toral is probably the closest we have to representing Earth. Got a nice picture there. Uh, and then I've actually got a, uh, a flat map version of it as well. And from the flat map I've added more pins, and you can see here that we've basically gone through and pinned all the key sort of bodies of land um, and, you know, political locations. I've only really got information in Ferron. Uh, that's where I'm spending all my time. And you can see here, we can now go down to that level, and from there I've got an even further zoomed in map of the Faro World map. This is that massive picture that takes a bit to load. There we go. So you can see here, I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of locations. Excuse my daughter in the background, she's a bit excited. Um, dozens of locations that have basically uh, been pinned onto the map. And uh, on those locations, obviously, we can just we can click on something and we can see some information about it. Um, and obviously, I haven't filled all of these in. It's getting better and better every day. But it's not quite there yet. Uh, where are we going to be playing around here? So Waterdeep will have some information. And there you go. So you've got Waterdeep. So we've very quickly gone from uh, planes a group of planes, planes of existence, into planets, into you know political continents or locations, um, into specific locations on the map. Um, and it's very organized, it's very easy to keep track of where everything is. Um, 
you can see here that I've not really used any of the prefixes or suffixes um, to sort of resort things. Um, and that's because I don't feel I really need to at this stage. Um, but you will see down here when I go to Ferron that I have. I've got a breakdown. I've got the world above and the underdark. Um, the world above being obviously surface level, underdark being everything that comes underneath. And you can see here, you can see here that I've used the ones and the twos uh, in the prefix section to basically categorize that. And the reason why I want it is the world above would actually appear under the underdark um, based on A to Z sorting, but the world above is above, so I want that to be one, the underdark to be two, and then under the underdark I've gone even further, I've broken it down into the upper dark, middle dark, and lower dark, just allowing me to keep things sorted. And in the upper dark you can see I've got Menzo. Um, that's the only thing I've really made down here at this stage. Uh, I never really documented the other dark to a great level yet, but uh, I certainly plan on coming back and doing that again. Um, on Menzo, you can see there's a nice map. I'll add pins to that, I'll add locations, and off we go. But to show you what that would look like if you were to actually go ahead and detail that even further. All right, here's the world above, and you can see this is all the locations that are pinned on that massive map. Um, that we saw just before. Um, there's quite a few. These are all the locations that come in the Storm King's Thunder book. It comes with a little bit of information. Not a great deal, but enough to sort of get you through. Uh, you can see here that I'm, I'm taking maps as they release them and, and adding them in. Um, there is one location that I have put a lot of detail in. Uh, at least I thought I had. Oh no, that's right. Sorry, I have started making a bit more of a category here. So I've got this massive selection of lists here and it's it's easy to find what you're onto um, if you go A to Z. But I'm playing around with the idea of making cities, towns and dungeons as three categories, maybe going further. I mean, you could do mountain ranges, rivers, uh, seas, um, and obviously using the uh, the prefixes in here to add in a bit of a sorting. City's been more important than towns in my opinion. <laughs> so basically come in here, create a top level parent bucket and I've added all my cities into here. Uh, so in here you can see I've got Neverwinter. I put a lot of information about Neverwinter. Um, and I, I started this, this snippet here oh, a long time ago, copying information from various places. Um, I've got two versions of the map. Um, this one here is the one that matters to me because it's 5th edition, this is post uh, Spell Plague. Um, and you can see down here I started writing all the merchants um, and starting some relationships. And that's that's a way you certainly could do things and I don't have a problem with it. Um, it's, it's clear what you're looking for. But I like my world to be a living, breathing place that I can change quickly and see quickly uh, what's going on. So I had a bit of a think and uh, I've gone with a different concept. So underneath here you can see I've made three different snippet styles. You can have more of it. Uh, the ruler, the organizations and the locations. These are three really important sort of things in my opinion. So under the ruler um, I've actually got the uh, the Lord Dagon Nevermender. Uh, he's actually in charge of this city. So by having a ruler parent, um, what I can do is I can drag someone into that section under ruler, um, giving me a very quick indication that he's the guy that's in charge. Um, and let's say he lost charge of Neverwinter due to whatever, maybe a huge war, I can just drag him out and put someone else in um, without me having to go through and sort of, you know, update this level of detail on every snippet that I've ever written it in. I like having that flexibility uh, and I think that could be a really powerful sort of way to set things up. Um, underneath Lord Neverwinter, you see I've got more. I've actually got the Neverwinter 9. So that's his personal backup. Um, and under here, I plan on basically creating the NPCs. Um, let me name one that are part of that Neverwinter 9. Again, keeping it nice and sorted. It's under the Lord. 
um, it's, it's near to him and that way if I ever come across the Lord uh, when I'm looking it up in the system I'll be able to quickly go oh hang on he's got a uh, contingency of nine people these are those people these are the details of them um, and obviously don't forget that when you are setting up NPCs you can put in as much information as you want uh, I personally find pictures to be you know pictures says a thousand words but you can put in as many uh, sort of interesting facts as you like so that's the ruler. Um, I really quite like that. Um, I think I'm going to use that for a lot of the big cities um, and political areas. Um, outside of that, uh, organizations. So organizations is obviously your guilds. Um, and I've come in here and I've added the guilds, added a bit of information about them. Uh, this is still a huge work in progress. But this gives me the basic guilds that operate out of this system. Now the only thing that I'm really probably not liking here is these these are obviously guilds that exist in this city, but there's going to be guilds like the the Order of the Gauntlet that exist in worlds, um, and you know they're they're all over the place in different cities. So I need to have a think about how I'd make multiple copies to these things. Um, I don't know exactly how I want to sort of sort that yet, but that is something I need to think about uh, and figure out a way to sort of create links. Um, obviously there is the uh, the way I did it up here where you could you know just list these are the common sort of groups that exist in the place and it'll link to a key section that could certainly happen um, but you know, I kind of liked just having this visibility here um, especially given that you can actually put people underneath them and box them into the organization that they exist in um, I think that's really cool um, you might go you know, uh, maybe the, the Neverwinter military force is a good, good option to do it, so I could have Neverwinter order the blue flame, Neverwinter order the gauntlet, and then other cities have another copy of that for that city name slash order the gauntlet, so I know that that's the, the guild there. Um, given that, you know, the guilds probably, while, while a massive group of people would well, um, be sort of profiled out of a certain city for a specific amount of time. Yeah, I don't know, something to think about. Underneath that, you see I've got locations in Neverwinter. Um, and I've broken that down into districts, and that's just obviously how Neverwinter is set up. Um, you can see there's no information there, these are just uh, parents. And then underneath these I've actually got some of the options that exist, um, and I've started filling them out. Um, well, not a lot, I think Moonstone Mask has got something, there you go. So Moonstone Mask, I've got a picture of it, I've got a description of it, um, what's sold, what service is sold, what sort of price range you're looking at, then I could add a lot more detail there. Under the Moonstone Mask, you can see I've got Ophala Cheryl Chelda Storm. Uh, got some information, got a picture about her. So the players can actually go in and meet that NPC in that location. Um, or, you know, if she, she needed to go and hide, let's say she was on the run, I could quickly move her to the Hall of Justice. Um, and that very quickly tells me that she's actually migrated there. Uh, that's her new place of residence. Um, I think it's a very powerful feature just using the actual parent and child uh, folder options just to move things around. Um, going even further into detail, so Tower District has the Merchant Square. Uh, under the Merchant Square, you've got shops. So there's Alchemist, Armour Shop. All right, Armour. As an example, I've got pictures of the different type of armor they might sell. And then I've got price tables of the different type of armors that they sell. There we go. So you've got your costs, things that can be bought. Um, for anyone that recognizes this, I've, I've used some third edition information. Now, then who runs the shop? Uh, Dross the Anvil runs this shop. You can see I've got a nice picture of him. I've uh, got some details here on how to roleplay him, um, who he is, uh, common sayings, and I've taken these from obviously some uh, uh, roleplaying books um, that are designed to flush out NPCs. Um, I'm a big believer in reusing information. Um, so I've done this with all of my shops. Uh, they've all got people that run them, uh, which is fantastic. There you go. So thinking about that we've now gone all the way from the elemental planes into a plane of existence 
into a galaxy, into a planet, down onto the actual face of that planet, now into cities, now into locations in that city, specifically down to who is actually located in that specific place in that city. I think that's a very powerful concept, um, and I think anyone who's building a world would really sort of enjoy playing around with this sort of setup um, to really help them sort of flesh out their world. Um, while we're here, I'll show you just a functionality that does exist with uh, NPCs. And you can see over here we've got relationships. So I click the plus button, and the relationship window comes up. In here we've got the option to basically change some relationship around. So usually um, I think we'd play with uh, belongs to, you know, you've got uh, different options here as an employer, as an owner, resident, blah, blah, blah. Got more options there. Um, we can have family relationships, child of. So we'll put a child of in here, um, just to sort of show you what it looks like. Um, we'll do Sophie. You put some details here. Um, child of. We'll just put child of Sophie. And see now over here. Now we've got the child of Sophie. Uh, if I was to click on Sophie. There's Sophie, um, you know, she's not looking too well after all her years in the, uh, the rusty pipe. And I've got some details here. You can see she's now got a relationship to Amina. Uh, so it's a, it's a two-way relationship, and it creates it both ways. Uh, once the players learn that relationship, you can click that button there, and obviously that indicates they've learned that. If they were using the player version, they'd know about that relationship. But we can go further than that. So let's click the plus button. Um, we got a public attitude. So public attitude is obviously what people know her to be. So she's publicly friendly towards Sophia. But she's privately privately hostile. Um, I mean, uh, despises Sephardia for raising her in the whole house. She blames her for her So you can really, you know, you can make this as detailed as you want, um, and it's really up to you how you flesh them out. But the benefit being that over here you've got some role playing abilities. You know, you've got she's publicly um, publicly happy towards her because she, you know, she has to be. But privately, she's actually despising her, and you know, because she's a child of. And you could make as many relationship taps as you want. So, you know think about using them, I think it's quite a, a powerful functionality. Alright, so we'll save that. It's a little bit of information that I don't mind actually having stay in my world. And boom, as you can see, we've now gone all the way down through our plane of existence into locations. It's all sort of easily organised uh, and clean. Um, I have used a little bit of the prefixes just to sort of state uh, the order that I want things to appear in, so that could certainly be done. Um, and how I categorise all of this now is, is sort of the next challenge for me. Um, I could certainly do that. There is another thing I'd, I'd probably like to mention. Um, Siddala Adbar, for example, uh, is a fortress. So one thing you can actually do is use the suffix here. Uh, you can save it as a fortress. Uh, ignore this, that one. Uh, 
Okay. Alright, you can see that's now got a fortress on it. So that is another way you could do things. Um, you know, you could label your cities as cities. Um, and fail uh, is a town, so I, I could label that as a town. And that is certainly something that you could do to make things sort of stand out as a bit clearer. Um, and there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. Then you've got your, your A to Z option, and that might be easier than actually breaking this down um, even further. Uh, going from there. Um, what I was thinking about, though, is, you know, you've got the Water of Ferron. Um, and for anyone who's watched Game of Thrones, there's, there's obviously another layer that you could possibly go into here. So you've got the world above. What you could do is click a containing topic um, and create something new. We'll go places. Um, and we could have a political reason, region. Um, you know, land of Nod. Maybe the land of Nod um, has its own ruler. So instead of cities having the ruler, you might have a governing body that sits over that, or you might have a king or a queen. Um, ruler. And then under the ruler, we can put the king. So then what you could have, let's say you've got a, a land that's broken up into four sort of um, political sections, you could have four rulers of those sections, and you could actually drag these different options or locations into these areas to indicate that they're under their rule. Um, and I think that that could be a very interesting concept uh, if you're playing a, a massive big political game that's changing um, political borders on a regular basis. Um, you know, at the end of each game, uh, there's a reaction or result of the, the player's actions or whatever's happening um, in your world. You could obviously come in here and uh, you could move things around. Uh, you can actually sort of watch um, a fight sort of occur. Um, and, you know, if you had your, your players... Uh, using the player version, you could actually use this as a way to show them um, what sort of uh, locations exist under a different ruler. Um, and, you know, if they're paying attention, uh, which they should be, um, you know, you could consider that they've gone into a tavern and they're asking questions about any changes, you could use this as the mecha mechanic for them to actually have to come and investigate what's changing. Uh, and so instead of you actually having to tell them, you know, the, the stone bridge was uh, changed over to the ruler of someone else, you could actually just move it in here and leave it up to the players to come and investigate this in their own time. I think that could be a really interesting concept. Um, but we'll just get rid of that because I'm not using that at this stage. Um, if the Lord of Pharaoh does have that sort of political uh, stuff going on yet, I'm not aware of it. I don't need to put it in. All right. Now, there's one other thing that I will show you here. Um, if we go back to Neverwinter, up in the cities, you can see I've put the ruler in here. Now, I don't want this ruler to link every time um, because it's just a parent dummy object. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to go manage names. All right, so we're in the option, we're going to the toolbox, we're going manage names. And in here, yeah, you can see you've got auto accept and you've got priority over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go never on ruler. And that will mean that will never link because it doesn't have to. Done. And that's a really easy way for us to sort of speed up the entire process of uh, the, the linking that's going on. If as you go through, you, you are going to follow my, my method of doing this, your your parent objects here should just basically be linked and never linked so that you don't got a, a huge time waste on your hands. But uh, there we have it. We've travelled all the way from uh, out in the, uh, the realm of the plains, all the way through to the very land and the, 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 the planet where we've got an individual standing in a shop. Very, very powerful, um, very neat, very organised. Um, there's a structure here 
um, and it's got the ability to be flexible and allow you to move things around, um, indicating that there's actually some sort of actual living, breathing world going on. I really like that. I'd say hats off Realmworks, I'd say you've done a really good job. Um, if Realmworks are watching this, the one thing I would probably comment, this bar here needs to be able to be movable. I need to be able to go across because I did already come across some situations where I'm having trouble uh, when I'm setting the relationships up, for example. I'm having trouble seeing the names because I've gone too deep down the rabbit hole. So I would say we need a, a bar down here to sort of change that view left and right. Um, apart from that, guys, uh, check out Realmworks. A very, very powerful piece of software. Um, it's got the uh, content market coming out in December, apparently. Um, <laughs> that's what happens when Coco Pops get into kids. Um, so the content market's coming out in December. Um, we don't know a lot about it at this stage, except we're going to be able to buy uh, pre-made content. Uh, I assume there's going to be an influx of Pathfinder content over 5th edition, which makes me sad. Um, so Wizards, get on that if you are watching. Um, we'd certainly prefer to be buying your books here so we could, don't have to you know, be copying and putting all of your content into this tool. We'd love to buy it straight in there. Um, it's going to save a lot of time and it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what sort of stuff gets released. Um, I'm certainly keen to start seeing what other people are doing with their realms um, once we have the ability to share realms a lot quicker. Uh, you're actually going to be about to make copies of realms even. I think uh, we've got some really cool times coming ahead in Realmworks um, and I'd say it's going to be absolutely industry changing. So check it out guys, uh, if you make any really cool um, cities or worlds, um, be sure to uh, you know come on the forums and tell us all about it. Um, everyone there would love to hear about it. So have a great day.